number two, Michael Wright. At forward for Michigan State, a sophomore listed at 6'8 from Southfield, Michigan, wearing number 25, Alucius Alagagne.
Really surprised that Hudson doubled down on right so early in the game, leaving Woods wide open. You cannot afford to do that against this team. We talked about in the paint. Arizona is very interesting. They have a finesse player and they have a power player, but you can't allow a double down on right to leave Woods wide open at 7-1. That was called on Hudson. What a great free throw shooting effort he's had in the tournament. Good again. Woods is now 24 of 25 in the tournament from the line. Full court pressure here. Wanting to turn this into a full court game is Lute Olsen. Thomas, the hero in the regional final win. And there's a steal by Arenas. Great pickup. Got it to Gardner. Quick five here for Arizona. And Michigan State already faces its biggest deficit of this tournament. Jim, great block out that time by Jefferson on the break, making it sure that Gardner had an open path to the basket. We talked about the free flow of this game so far. Arizona has what they like. They go to a zone now. 1-2-2 two, two zone with Gardner out on top. Going to force Michigan State to show they've got a perimeter game. Charlie Bell from the perimeter. Ah. Tipped around and back out to Bell. Jefferson on the reach in. Doesn't want a cheap foul like that. He's aggressive, but you don't want your key defender to get a cheap foul. There's the steal. Look at this good job by Arenas. And then watch Jefferson block out, making sure that Richardson, who's an incredible leaper, can't come over for the block. They stay in the zone. That means Richardson's got to find himself some holes in that zone for his jump shot. Not on that side of the court with Jefferson on him. Richardson be smart to come on this side of the zone to find a better hole. Richardson steps in. Can Jefferson influence the shot? Absolutely. Out to Gardner. And you can see what Arizona wants to do. They're pushing that ball up the floor. Taken away by State. Up ahead. Bell. Pull up. Thought about it. Anna Gagne. Smart move by his by Anna Gagne. He does not want to try to make a play. Possession of the ball so important for this Michigan State team. They don't turn it over often. They have great rebounding ability, so you really have to work defensively. Nice jump out by Woods and recovers. Thomas, the man of a week ago, hits the first one today. Two-point shot. He had 19 against the Owls in the regional final, South final. That was seven above his previous career high. And for John Chaney, never any luck, huh, Jim? You'd never expect that man to come up with the big points the day you're trying to work your way to the Final Four. His fifth time, though, in the Elite Eight, and coming from an 11 seed, it was quite a run. Inside push off, Anna Gagne with the hold. Lauren Woods did a terrific job setting on Gagne up that time to get open. Tom Izzo's teams rode to the Final Four. Well, they didn't have to play any real top seeds, Billy, although Gonzaga and Temple have certainly proven through tournaments past that not an easy out. They did not beat a big six conference team, though, to get here. But I'd have to say, Jim, and we saw them, I thought Temple was playing as well as anybody in the country in a very difficult assignment to get by. That bracket, though, certainly exploded from the name early. Yeah, yep. North Carolina and Florida out early. A little zone matchup now by Michigan State. Arenas, three-point shot. Too strong and long board. Tipped around the bell. He taps it to Thomas. Coming in. Oh, what a block by Jefferson. Oh, stop. Jim, there is only maybe one or two players in the country that are capable of stopping Richardson on this dunk, and Richard Jefferson is one of them. Oh. Do you see where he was on that play? An incredible defensive play here. It's like he just palmed it right out of his hands. And Richardson mentally right now has to be very fragile after this start. Jefferson has been all over him on all three attempts. Well, really give Jefferson a lot of credit for accepting this role as the defensive stopper on this team. Very gifted, but with this role, he's become so much more effective. Right through the hands of Michael Wright. He needs a field goal attempt in the worst way. Did not take one in the regional final over Illinois. And here is the Lute Olson Arizona run to the final fourth to Kansas City, beating up Butler, then Old Miss. They're down 12 at one point in that uh, first half against the Rebels. And then Illinois, where they set the all-time tournament mark, most free throw attempts and free throws in a game. There's Arizona still staying in the zone. And Agania trying to make a play inside. Not there. And 
cleared by Wright. Michigan State so far, Jim, has not figured out a way to get their offense going. Woods up on the other end, fed by Jefferson. Don't like that matchup at all for Anaganya. They're throwing right over the top of his head. Look at the wide arm span of Woods there in that zone, covering a lot of territory. And he doesn't have to worry about Anaganya inside being an offensive threat. They're going to get Richardson over on the other side of the floor. With Jefferson over there, he's going to have a hard time getting off a jump shot. Hudson, baseliner, and right had it knocked out of his hands. Anaganya won't let it happen. Too strong. on the second one. And remember this, Michigan State rebounds about half the shots they miss. They're not getting it today. Woods' spirited play continues. This week to Minneapolis, where he also has a tremendous tie to this community. Right, where he went to college. Augsburg where College. He was married. Right now, he's got his team really on a roll. I thought pretty good move by Jefferson. They say traveling. Get an interactive Final Four experience with fan polls, in-game features, audio clips, video highlights, and more at the Internet's home of college basketball, cbs.sportsline.com, or AOL keyword is CBS Sportsline. We've got a couple of subs in for the Spartans. They brought in Zach Randolph and Marcus Taylor, a pair of freshmen. Jim, much more offensive-oriented are the two freshmen than the guys they replaced. Let's see if they can get it started. Gardner unlocks Taylor's first attempt. Comes in from behind. This is a better offensive unit on the floor right now, and probably Randolph better set up to guard inside. Arenas threw that right at the ankles of Woods. No chance. Great job by Taylor recovering that ball. Taylor zips to the bucket, and it went to the line. Well, I said at the start of the show, the freshman replacements were going to be a key. I really like what I saw in Marcus Taylor there. One of the premier high school guards in the country last year. He comes in this game looking like he belongs. About Terrific seven, move on the inside. This and this will change things up defensively a little bit for Lute Olsen. Because when you put Randolph in the game for Anaganya, you have an inside offensive presence. And the same way with Taylor from the outside shooting. So I think that Michigan State much better served with this lineup against Arizona than the one that started. That foul was on Michael Wright, his first. They'd made only one of their first eight attempts before that three-point play by the freshman. Like the matchup defensively, too, for Michigan State right here. Randolph powering right down inside. Jefferson jumper too strong, and Bell with the long board. Probably one of the best rebounding guards we have ever seen in college basketball. He's been that way from day one since he arrived at Michigan State. Randolph inside, doubled up. Beauty gives it up, Hudson, too strong in the lane. He expected a little body punishment there and didn't get it. That's why he overshot the basket. Man to man now. Woods beats Hudson on that one. This is the jumper, though. Lauren should have taken that one to the basket, Jim. He had a wide open there. space yep. there. There's Randolph with the great hands on the inside. That was a tough pass. He fielded it. Michigan State be wise to give Randolph some touches down inside. He's very active. And he'll make Woods have to be honest. Hudson, Woods there. Randolph on the ball, and he too has a three-point opportunity. Back-to-back -back plays by the freshman. Jim, I'm going to say something about Tom Izzo. Very seldom does a coach have the guts to recruit great freshmen, start them out slowly, get them into the starting lineup, and then realize they need to come back out of the starting lineup to get tougher defensively. These kids have really responded to some great coaching, and right now they're producing for it. First it was Marcus Taylor on the three-point play. Now it could be Randolph. Edgerson, Eugene Edgerson comes in for Arizona, playing in his second Final Four, the last real active member on that 97 championship team. And Luke Walton seeing his first play for the Wildcats, number four. And was Edgerson active, particularly off the boards in the last Final Four? Against North Carolina in the semifinals, he had nine rebounds. Here he touches it down low, kicks it out, Gardner three. And it's Bell again with another board. Gardner had 20 last year against Michigan State. He's got to look at him. Oh, oh Chappelle is hammered. No call. Bell three. The reason no call, he got hit by Randolph. A lot of collisions inside, but a pair of Spartans knocking each other down. Gardner, yes, with the three. They can't give him too many looks. Chappelle is really hurt, Jim. He's trying to, he's grimacing out there, trying to gut it out. Izzo saw it. He's already sent Thomas back to check in. Randolph scoring again. 
How about that presence inside to go to the pump fake to get Woods up off the floor? The flow of this game, though, Michigan State, a team that doesn't like to play full court, but can. Inside, Edgerson, yes. But the whole pace of this game has changed with the insertion of Randolph and Taylor. Yeah, those freshmen right now are no longer freshmen. I mean, they, they look like they're ready to go. Chappelle, a pretty good shooter. Taylor also with a three. Oh, boy. is Taylor, three-pointer. And I think the discipline that Tom Izzo put in those kids have them ready to go in a big game like this. Great to see. Gardner just outside the arc, and he bangs home another three. Now, there's a little difference defensively. Taylor not the defender that Charlie Bell was on Gardner earlier, and Gardner recognizes that as well. Kind of interesting. We have two ACC players out on the floor. I thought that was the second game. <laughs> Woodson played at Wake Forest. Right. Chappelle, Chappelle. And, and Chappelle still on the floor. They weren't able to make a substitution. No whistle. And he's in there and heading to the line. Was a great outside shooter at Duke University. Well, Actually, and there's why there was no foul. You can see it, Jim. Look at Zach Randolph, though. Zach Randolph, what he can do. He never felt it, did he? Like, he didn't, oh, it was like a fly in his shoulder. <laughs> Chappelle almost gets his arm torn off. Watch how strong Zach Randolph is. Bam. Well, you know, Randolph was hit from behind oh, yeah. by Edgerson. Well, you might have called the foul on Edgerson. Yeah. Double collision, Chappelle. Well, we haven't had any fouls called teammate to teammate, so, you know, that's why it wasn't called. Thomas and Ballinger come in for the Spartans. Bell and Hudson out. So Chappelle will stay on the floor. Oddity with four conference rings in his career. Two at Duke, two at Michigan yep. State. Big baskets a year ago in the title game when Cleves had to go in with the rolled ankle. Great action early here in Minneapolis. We'll be right back. Shooting 60%. No opponent has shot 50% all year against the Spartans. Jim, two things up there, obviously, the shooting percentage, but also rebounding. Only one team this entire year out-rebounded uh, Michigan State. That was Iowa with Reggie, the, Evans. <laughs> Reggie Evans, the nation's yep. number one rebounder. Uh, so you can see they out-rebound teams by 15.7 a game, and they're being out-rebounded in this one. Why Arizona is now in the lead. That's the top rebounding margin they put up this year. 23 years in college basketball since Alcorn. Alcorn State. 78. 1978. Good aggressive zone defense now by Michigan State matching up. Frazier in the game now for Arizona. Woods fade away and right inside again inactive offensively. What Wright is not doing is getting his hands on the ball with two hands. He's slapping it around in there. He doesn't seem to be sure of himself. Hard to believe a man of his ability did not have a field goal in a win, the win against Illinois. First time in his career that uh, is approaching almost nine, well, this is the 98th game. And uh, so far in this one, 12 minutes plus, no attempts. Here's that 1-2-2 two, two zone. Look at the ground that Woods covers in there. Thomas. And tipped around Bell, back to Woods. Got Ahead, Walton. Walton. Oh, he had his man coming in right, and he wanted to hit him. Yeah, he wanted to make the pass off the catch. Did a good job just recovering that ball. They're lucky to still have it. Walton has a total game. Pretty good shooter. Scary way this it away. Oh, it's David easy. Thomas. And he oh, almost oh, lost control of it going up. Did you notice that? that? That was the shakiest breakaway I've seen. He almost lost it on the dribble, almost lost it on the shot. But in either case, puts his team from this one down. I really think Arizona's got to figure out a way to get right off the board somehow scoring-wise. There he is. Shooting at last. And Richardson, good box out down low. Randolph taking off. For the lead, blocked by Wright, but they'll call him right for his second. Now, what we are seeing here is Michigan State giving Arizona some of their own treatment, saying if you want to rebound against us, we'll run. Near the conclusion of every tournament game, we select a Chevrolet most valuable player from each team. And to date, Chevrolet has contributed Approximately $8 million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. So Randolph is at the line. He was number three in the Big Ten this year in field goal shooting percentage. Had his probably his biggest game, 27.7 rebounds against Florida. Arena's back in with two. Gardner's also reinserted. Frazier out. So about a minute of play. Also reports his number 33. Now we have the Taylor matchup.
matchup in the backcourt with Bell. Etcherson also returning. Taylor on the floor for Michigan State. Boy, Etcherson doing a nice job on the boards. Two hands, grabbing it tough. Jefferson wanted the lob pass from Gardner. Good decision by Gardner not to throw it from that far out. And a hold call. Randolph trying to defend Lauren Woods. Access live head-to-head -head team and player stats through this interactive telecast available on Ultimate TV. Randolph whistled for his first team foul number four. Woods showing a really nice move there, Jim, putting that ball on the floor and going right by Zach Randolph. Giving up some inches as Randolph. Arenas, three, yes. Huge shot. Number zero, just to extend this defense, both teams getting kind of satisfied to pack down inside the three-point area. And Arenas, with that kind of shot, can extend that Michigan State defense. Zach Randolph's got to be careful trying to handle that ball and hang on to it too long against the zone. Arenas almost took it away yeah. from him. In effect, with that zone, when the ball goes inside, you are double-teamed as soon as you catch it. Six on the shot clock. Thomas, again, a long two, and he gets it. Good block out that time by Hudson without fouling. And Jefferson just couldn't get around him. Thomas's last two attempts have been just inside of the arc. But Jim, the worst shot you can take in basketball. Yep, and it's a little confusing here if you look at the way this is painted. Jefferson, front of the rim, keeps it alive. And this might be Randolph. That was uh, Thomas put, holds his hand on his head, realizing if you're guarding a guy that can rebound as well as Jefferson, you have to block him out on the shot. And he's going to come out. Tom Izzo is going to look him right in the face and say, hey, we work on that every single day. How could you let the shooter get a rebound? Second on Randolph, 15 foul. dangerous against this particular defense. He's in the corner, wide open. Stepped on the line. No, I no. think he got pushed by Randolph. That's three on Randolph. That's a huge foul there, and there's what gets Randolph in trouble and separates him from being the great player he will be. Defensively, he is just not ready to go. We'll see the replay. See, he is not in position to guard the man out on the side by sitting down and taking away the baseline cut. And they, were, they had a man, Ballinger, who's in there now at the scorer's table waiting to come in for Randolph after he picked up his second. Couldn't get him on the floor fast enough. Arenas and Jefferson looking for lob passes against the backside of that zone. Woods takes the jumper. Edgerson inside, tipped around to Hudson. Uh, Richardson kept that alive by just going over the top of everybody. When is Richardson going to score? Block foul on Edgerson. Boy, we see that all the calls, one, one. that's going to be on Woods on the inside, Jim. And what we're seeing, it's all the calls the going against the defense. Woods first. The Lauren Woods, how about his play so far, Billy? I think it's been excellent. Not only has he played aggressively on the inside, he's been making himself available for lob passes and really making Michigan State have to worry about him inside opening up some things for his teammates. One and one, and first point of the game for the second team All-America, Jason Richardson, who was named by his teammates co-MVP of the season with Andre Hudson. First team All-Big Ten, terrific performer. But really feeling the presence of Jefferson in this game. He's 0 for 5 from the field. Boy, Arenas has been nice and calm out there today for a great shooter and scorer that he is. Walton snaps it out quickly. Gardner setting it up for a three. And there's the real advantage of having a guy like Walton on the floor. He understands the game. He actually knew where he was going to pass that ball before he caught it, Jim. That's what made it so effective. Gardner has 11 of Arizona's 27. Had 20 against, Arizona, against Michigan State last year. Young man from Big Ten country. Indianapolis. Right, is actually Arizona practice at his high school when they won the national championship back in Indianapolis. Marcus Taylor on the floater. He was not able to watch that practice right. at North Central High School in Indianapolis. The security wouldn't let him in. He was a sophomore then. Oh, well, I got a Here question that shot. <laughs> not a good shot. He said he was hit on the arm. Probably should have been because it was not a good idea to take it. And there's a foul on his part. Two big 
mental mistakes by the backcourt leader. And Lou Dawson letting him know about it. It'll be a one and one at the line Thursday on Survivor. Seven castaways remaining, five episodes to go. Surviving the Outback is going to come down to one deal. It's an offer they can't refuse. Don't miss an all-new Survivor Thursday on CBS. One and one, Taylor, front of the rim all the way. Some weak free throw shooting here by Richardson and Taylor. Michigan State can ill afford not to get the cheap baskets. Five of nine as a team. Sparks from the line. We're talking about a team that shoots 72% on the year, Jim. So way off their average. Timeout has been called. Izzo frustrated. His team has never led. But it's a tight one for the first half. The Chevy truck's eye vision. Jim, what we're going to see is this tight zone defense by Arizona. Marcus Taylor, who's done a terrific job. Here we see him splitting that zone double team out front. Here you'll see it from the backside. He sees his opening, goes inside. He's having a terrific first half. Eight points, he's three for six. A tremendous lift off that bench by the freshman. They've needed it from the backcourt because the two starters, Richardson and Bell, have not hit a shot from the field. They average 29 a game between them, and they have so far today one point. A free throw by Richardson. And they stay in the matchup zone. Right over the top of it to Woods. Woods off balance. What a shot going the other way. That team is so small out there right now that Arizona, and this may sound crazy, but can throw right over the top of the zone to get the ball to Woods anytime, and he can deliver from there, either with his shot or with the pass. Team may be too small to play zone against Arizona. Good job realizing Taylor's having a hot hand. He's really playing him hard. Richardson gets it to the corner. Bell's three. Richardson tip twice. Yes, the second time. There are those offensive rebounds, Jim, that Michigan State is incredible. And as I said, almost half of the shots they miss this year, they get the rebound. It's tough to beat a team that can do that. That was Lute Olson's biggest concern when we met with him yesterday morning. See, they don't want to give them extra possessions. Good move here by Tom Izzo to go back to the man-to-man -to -man with his smaller team on the floor. Away from the ball, there's a whistle on Taylor, and it'll be a one-on-one. -one. Coming up, singular at the half, and join Greg and Clark and Bill Walton for first half high. All this information we've been reading over the last few days. I wonder how many Mr. Basketballs are in this final four. <laughs> it just seems like every state is being represented. You'll get one more. This is now coming up. Frazier returns the third free throw attempt of the game for Arizona. This after 56 attempts against Illinois. New record. 43, also a NCAA all-time tournament record. Well, there's a difference between the aggressive play of Michigan State and Illinois. Illinois goes to bang it. I think in, in the physicalness of Michigan State, they really don't play for the foul, to wear down and to give up, let's say, at the center position, 15 fouls. Six uh, fighting Illini expelled from the game for too many fouls. That's a little strong eight. expel, James. I mean, they how were about, playing defense. They got caught. How about how six going out? That's a little strong. Yeah. They were down to... Just a few players left. Seems like every time Michigan State gets within one, Arizona can figure out a way to keep that lead going. Hudson with that basket, his first two of the game. Inside and blocked. Good job, Ballinger. Ballinger holds on to it, draws the foul. Now see, Frazier cannot make the same move there that Arenas would have made. Arenas would have been another foot higher and been able to deliver that basket. Game two will be Duke and Maryland for the fourth time and all three of their games have been memorable that's putting it mildly understating it well Jim you have Duke in a situation where they've won two of the three but when you look at the stats for the whole deal and the three Maryland has had the advantage Ballinger also fails on the front end of a one and one and who would have ever expected in that particular case the one win that Maryland had was at Duke for the second straight yep. year on what was senior day Nate James and Shane Battier's final appearance in Cameron, a loss to Maryland. Nice crossover with Jefferson going up against Bell. Good Who's rebound. Quick enough to stay with him on that move. Jefferson missing the shot. Richardson's pulling it down. We got a timeout. 
Tom Izzo wants a good play to get the lead finally. Minute six to go. First half. Tenth time in NCAA history, two teams from the same conference meet in the final four. And the last time two ACC teams met in the final four, 1981, 80. Virginia, North Carolina. Yep, they met in the same day as today. Matter of fact, the day that uh, President Reagan, oh, the, the day before, right? Let's see, President Reagan was shot the, the, on Monday. So that was, on, that was, the, that was the, the Saturday. That was a Ralph Sampson. One minute. Al Woods had the great game. One minute to go in the half. It's been a good one. Biggest lead for Arizona, five. Never trailed in this game let's, at this point. Let's see the set play. Probably trying to get Richardson open, and he faked out Hudson. No, it really was, Jim. He Hudson got faked out. If Richardson would have held his ground, he would have been open under the basket. Missed and, by a wide mark, though. Yeah, it really did, and you can see that Tom Izzo really upset with that because if Jason Richardson had not faked out his teammate, he'd had a basket. How will they use the clock here with an 11-second differential? I think you want to go down, take the quick shot, and get two possessions, but they don't do that, so they will give Michigan State at least one chance. Solid screen by Lauren Woods, looking for the screen and roll. Jefferson, he's blocked this time. Oh, they see a piece to the hand, Richardson. Isn't it amazing? We have two of the great leapers in college basketball going head-to-head, -head, and neither one of them worries about a defender going up with him on the jump. Now, watch this. Look at how quickly Richardson got up there. Now, Jefferson normally would say, there's going to be nobody within a foot of me on that jump shot. Two shots. His parents are here, Richard's parents, and they drove to the first two weeks to Kansas City and San Antonio flew here but they're non-denominational Christian missionaries his mother and father all over the world Kenya Tanzania Great Britain throughout Europe you know in one of the the tough losses they had after winning out there in Maui flew all the way to play against Purdue and in that game Jefferson was 0 for 6 did not score and it was one of the big losses that start the tailspin for Arizona early in the year. Two to tie at the half, a three for the lead at the intermission. With seven seconds to go, Taylor manned up. Somebody open. Bell steps in with three, blocked by Woods. Jefferson looks up, he'll launch it. Good half. Excellent half. Arizona never trailed, never led though by more than five. Gardner's 13 points, leading the way. Group for the Spartans hit only five of 19 in the first half. Anyaganya back in the game. Wright wants it. This is the most aggressive I've seen Wright in this game. And look at him score his first field goal since the Sweet 16. I tell you, he looked in the mirror, Jim, at halftime, or somebody talked to him. That's the first time I've seen him really post up aggressively. A good a game and a half without a field goal. Richards, a beautiful move. Quick finish it. Back out the bell. And there again, getting a rebound on a missed shot. The key to this team's success. Hudson, jam. Tipped out, Bell. Stuck, tries to go inside, and in there is Gardner. Up ahead, Jefferson. Richardson defending. Oh, come up short. Charlie, Jefferson. Charlie Bell, really lucky and making mistakes that you'd never see out of this senior. Gardner steps in on the pass to Thomas with the steal right back. Woods outside, jumper. He's, he's got that jump shot. Boy, I'll tell you. When you get a seven-footer that can step out, make that jump shot, he's always open for a passing lane. Charlie Bell, Jim, did something I haven't seen from him in a long time. Took a shot, stood and watched it, and he was lucky that Arizona didn't get a wide-open break. Again, Richardson misfiring from the outside and a push. I think if you're Tom Izzo, you better call a quick timeout here in the second half. His team is not in sync. Look at Wright moving his, his feet. Power, that's the Michael Wright. That's an all Pac-10 first-teamer. And he hasn't been seen on this squad for the last two games. Believe me, that's the player he is, not what we've been looking at. That shot he challenged Anna Gagne, who just a moment ago at the other end collected his third foul. Now Randolph will be in quickly, except Jim, he's got three. Remember that cheap one he picked up on the defensive baseline. Ooh, underneath, Anna Gagne is in there. They're gonna call him again? Yes, his wow. fourth. Now Randolph's going to have to come in, and Tom Izzo, at a position he would like to be a little deeper, 
has got a real problem. He's got his two power players that Wright would be having guard in, in, in real foul trouble. Anagania four, Randolph with three. He would have liked to get about six, eight minutes out of Anagania before coming in with Randolph. Jefferson, three-pointer, and Arizona has its largest lead of the game. Not a good play, another mistake by Bell. Arenas blocked by Hudson. Jefferson chases it down, outbattles the two Spartans. I don't think Tom Izzo can wait any longer before he calls a timeout. His team really comes out in the second half totally out of sync. Totally uh, outplayed here, and it's about to be double digits if the Cats score on this trip. Great move by Wright. Told Jefferson to clear out so he can have the ball. Ball is up his own jumper. Inside, lays it in. Michigan State has got to call a timeout to slow this game down. They're going to. They turned it over three straight trips. Woods. Nice out. Yep. Taylor's in, and he comes away with it. See if Taylor can settle this team down and offensively get something started again. We'll see if they can get a trip or at least get a shot off. They've turned it over for the last four. The ball in Taylor's hands. He can make some things happen with some dribble penetration. Inside Hudson on the blocks. Not ready to score. Randolph tries to follow it up. And out it goes to Gardner. They've got some numbers. If they all converge. Gardner stronger than is Taylor, and he knew it. And so it's almost like a guy in a post that thinks, hey, you know what? I'm too strong for you. He goes right through Taylor. Taylor, no chance to handle him. This is a very, very critical time in this game right here for Michigan State because the flow of the game is all Arizona, and they've got to figure out a way to score. Three-point play, 14-point lead. the second half there i really thought that bell and, and uh, richardson both didn't even try to challenge him now he had a big step well, on him but they just backed off and you got a guy that can really flush the basket and we'll see him see he's hanging on the rim there's nobody there good call by the official another, another one here it comes arenas richardson this oh. time no nope, he won't get there either again you have that can finish in Jefferson and Arenas, and even though Richardson's a great shot blocker, he's not going to get to that one. It's amazing to see Michigan State, a team normally great with the basketball, turning it over time after time. And the lead is 17. Hudson with two. And Arenas is hurt. Holding his arms above his head. Looks like he just stretched something. In time. What if it was on the dunk? That field goal by Hudson breaks a drought of almost seven minutes without a field goal. Thursday on CBS, a reminder. Find out why more than 20 million viewers a week already know that CSI is the hottest new show on television. Don't miss it after Survivor Thursdays on CBS. You know, Arenas may have stretched himself on that dump. Wincing over there in a lot of pain right in the back of his neck. Luke Walton in. Right, calling for it, demanding it. And finishing it off. And what made the play is Lauren Woods at 7-1 has the perfect angle to throw that lob inside. Nice look. Taylor got it there. Woods rejects. Second block of the game. Randolph on the floor. And a tie-up arrow is Michigan State. Here, now watch this. He goes up. And just a weird strain on his part. He runs back down the floor. Seems unnatural at this point, and all of a sudden it seems to hit him. It's kind of like that uh, Dunleavy play. Remember we had down in uh, in Philadelphia where the, he just had that stinger. Bell with a three. Just can't find it today. Charlie Bell having the nightmare game of his life. Dunleavy's though, was he was hammered. Yeah, he was. One, in this one, there was no, no contact. Well, just maybe an odd position for the arms. Woods showing some moves, too strong. Tipped up, Jefferson keeps it alive. But Jefferson has really been the secret. Oh, what a sweet stroke for a three. 
He has been the secret. He's athletic enough to take. The Cats have just blown this wide open. 53-33. His athleticism has taken Michigan State out of the game on both ends of the floor. Wow, what a screen by Hudson. Walton even deflects it. Every pass challenged. Bell steps in. Two converge. Back out Taylor with the three. Thomas waits. Number 11, Tinka Thomas. But you know, it seems like every time Michigan State scores, Jim, it's by accident almost. It doesn't seem to be within the flow of the game. But just a very proud team. You talk about a defending national champion. It's a little bit of a misnomer in college ball with you know, the cast of characters. You lose right? three starters. Yeah, you lose three starters. Exactly the same roster. Exactly. Trying, though, they were to duplicate Duke's feet of championships, Indianapolis, Minneapolis, back to back. And that's right with a jumper. And this is uh, certainly becoming his half. I said all wrong in the first half. He's getting back to being all right again. Good fake, but look at how good Jefferson recovers. Thomas got to be ready to shoot that ball of the catch. The whole offense is inside the three-point line. Just like a foot or two yep. inside the... Well, you know, you talk strike. about the three guys. Granger, Peterson, and Cleves represented 46% of that national championship points last year. So it's not like you just replaced them automatically. And a lot of things that won't show up in the stats, too. They represent it. Out comes Bell. The last stone. The Flint man gives it up, and Hudson converts. Uh, there's a running full court pressure now. Trying to guide this team back into the ball game. Probably not a bad time for Lute Olsen to give Lauren Woods a rest. He's got a nice working margin here. Save Woods to be fresh the last 10 minutes. Walton outside, Gardner three, back of the rim. Bell, he wants to run with it. Gardner coming in on him. Boy, Woods thought he had that time, but he didn't take in consideration how well Charlie can get up in the air. Luke says, hold on, let's take a time out here. We've given up six unanswered. Arena's still trying to stretch it out. Double, double, triple. Boy, I'll tell you, for young players watching, don't commit in the air. The under 12 timeout. We'll be right back. Comeback win this year, 13 points. Comeback win against Penn State, a team that later knocked them out of the Big Ten tournament in the quarterfinals. The gritty Penn State team that made the Sweet 16 in this event. Here we'll see the injury coming right up here. See that bang? And then he goes down and extended himself for the dunk. And that could be a very serious problem, not only for this game, but if Arizona were to advance, they have got to have Arena's help. Hudson, ooh, slides off the front of the rim, but he'll shoot a pair. Nice offensive set by Michigan State. It looks like they like Hudson posting up and sealing inside. And as soon as Lute Olsen sees that, he's coming back with Lauren Woods. He doesn't want to go ahead and take away from this nice working margin he has. Two for Hudson, who along with Charlie Bell and Quinn Buckner are the only three to ever start for a Big Ten champion four years. Woods back on the floor. Well, Jim, Jim, these seniors that are on this floor for Michigan State are the winningest over a three-year period of any players that have ever played in the Big Ten. So that is quite an accomplishment. Four, four championships. Ten championships, an NCAA championship. Three final three fours. fours. I mean, you go on and on. I mean, this become legendary proportions for these guys. And don't give up on them yet. They're on an eight-point run here to slice it to 12. Anderson doesn't want that shot. Randolph realizes it backs off. Smart move on his part. Jefferson cuts in and has it taken right away. Hudson, but this time the arrow's Arizona's way. You see a little change now all of a sudden. It seems like Michigan State has calmed down a little bit. They got in a panic mode as they got bl blown out primarily by throwing the ball away. Not any lack of intensity on their part. Just bad decision making. They had those four straight trips where they turned it over. And if I were Arizona, I'd get that ball to Lauren Woods. With Randolph on it. Walton drives. Too strong with the shot. Out it goes and off the fingertips of Woods. Good hustle by Richardson. 
And right now we see Arizona, and, and one of the reasons also that they've got some problems, Arenas is out of the ball game, takes away their primary shooter to extend the defense. Michael Wright, though, will come back for Edgerson. And Lute Olsen, he just staying on top of this game, just doing a great job. He realizes with Arenas out, he cannot afford to not have another scorer in the game. So he comes back with Wright. Now Walton becomes a primary passer. They go back to their zone. One, two, two. Chappelle is in for the Spartans. Oh, pass oh, totally over the head of Richardson. Test your knowledge of tournament trivia and participate in live polls through this interactive telecast available on Ultimate TV. That's the second time they've miscommunicated. Jim, let me explain something about Michigan State. They had 132 more assists than turnovers on the year. We are seeing a Michigan State team that Tom Izzo is probably saying, who are they out there? The seven in this half, and here's one the other way. Traveling. Arizona being very impatient with this nice work in margin. And now a critical play, I think, in possession for Michigan State. Try to get it down to single digits if possible. Need a three to do that, but they have taken a 20-point deficit and have a chance to maybe even cut it in half right here very quickly. Nice pass. It does it back with that shot. Now we see a little ebb and flow, and as I pointed out last year, they were the national champs, but they came back in every game. Got it to 10, right at the 10-minute mark. Gardner on Bell and almost taken away by Chappelle. Jefferson gets it to go, and Arenas is coming back. Jefferson has been the factor in this game on both ends of the floor that Michigan State has not had an answer for. Randolph between two defenders and going to the line for a three-point try. You're seeing a lot of championship caliber coming out. Jim, we talked about this being a great Final Four, and that's because all of these teams know how to win. The freshman again, doing the job inside with that big wide body. Jefferson got a fingertip on it. That's the second foul on Woods, and Randolph coming through big here at the Final Four, the freshman. And how about Randolph shouting at his teammates just like he's the backcourt leader? The team cleaves all over again. And there's the single-digit deficit goal you spoke of. Side Woods, power move, take it away. Wright is there, and he's going to the line. Huge play by Wright because Woods had no business going in there with his head down. Loose ball, and Michigan State just can't get their hands on it. Michael Wright with all 10 of his points in this half, starting with this move. Now, somebody talked to this young man himself, knowing the way he likes to play. It was probably Michael Wright talking to himself in the mirror because he has come out this second half and shown us why he's of All-American caliber. Second team All-America this year and raised right there in Big Ten country in Chicago. Coming to life with 11 and a half. And Arenas is back on the floor. Back on the floor, they stay in the zone. So they're back out there on the floor for the first time, Jim, in a long time with the original starting lineup is Arizona. Randolph trying to seal inside. And again, they go in the air to throw the ball away. In Arizona, everyone was breaking on that near steal. Tough shot, Taylor. Oh. Tipped up, Arenas almost tipped it in again the other way. Boy, you talk about extending when you had a problem with the back of your neck. That was a terrific rebound on his part. It'll be Arizona ball. Thomas is back in. Looks like Tom Izzo wants his team to pick up full court. Charlie Bell is doing that, but it makes no sense for one man to press and the other guys to go on the other end of the floor because Walt would come down here and just be the outlet pass, so no pressure available. Yeah, they're all staying back. Yeah. Gardner can get a solid screen, but Woods doesn't need it. And a man. Wright wanting more. Trying to make the move. And Bell. Got some numbers here. Kicks it out quickly. Now we see Michigan State wanting to push that ball. Good decision by Taylor. Randolph is a man child in there, isn't he? Takes a shot over Woods. Rebound Bell. Tipped up by who else? Randolph. Randolph. He is verbalizing, energizing, and doing a job that way. Look at him shouting at his teammates. Love to see that out of a young player. This game has all of a sudden gotten serious again. Arenas. Well, not showing any signs. 
to that. It looked like a pinched nerve over there. Jim, watch Zach Randolph in here. Just wide body, soft hands. He's got that incredible combination of guys that have the wide bodies and soft hands. Lute Olsen grimacing, just not there. You know, I saw a stat that I could not believe. You know, Lute Olsen could be, if he wins this national championship, the oldest to ever win a ever win a national championship as a coach being Bog Allen. Yep. I mean, he looks like he's 52 years of age. Richardson in for Bell. Charlie Bell with some big rebounds, comes out of the ball game. Lute, who took a program that really had very little tradition, no tradition, 1-17 in, in the Pac-10 the year before he got there. 4-24 on the year. Yeah, by the fifth year, he had him in the Final Four with Kerr and Tolbert and that whole group. This is the fourth time he's brought the Cats here. They're trying to get to the championship. The Final Four, Jim Nance and Billy Packer, and uh, Billy, take us down the stretch here. What do you expect we're going to see? Well, one of the things I think now that Arenas is back that really helps Arizona because they can extend offensively what they can do out there right now. I think for Michigan State, you've got to find a way to score. I think Zach Randolph's the guy to get the ball to down inside, make everything collapse, and then try to hit out. Jason Richardson has not been a factor in his game offensively, Jim. He has got to hit some shots. He's made only one of eight, and you can see it was going to be a difficult day after his first attempt was well, blocked by Jefferson. Yeah, and who was more to face? come. He's doing exactly to Richardson what he did to the Big Ten player of the year last week, Frank Williams. Well, Frank Williams and Richardson were the two best players in the league, so he's had their lives miserable. Absolutely. And here's that zone again. Let's see if he can get the shot off. Walton's on him on that shot. Good recovery by Geiger. Decided to pass on, and Woods stuffs it. Last touch That's by Arizona. Is that Lauren Woods' third block? It that is. gives him 20 for the NCAA tournament so far. And he didn't even have to jump on that one. Watch this block. He doesn't even jump. Holds his hand straight up and says to Zach, you're a little too small, fella, to put that shot up in my face. <laughs> The only thing that's held Warren Woods back from being a great, great college player is himself. Richardson, now one of nine, and it's tipped up and finally in by Hudson. There's that rebounding power on the offensive glass. Three tries for Michigan State. Hudson had only two at halftime. Now he's got 14 for the game, trying to mount a huge comeback for his Spartans, who are down 20 at one point in this half. Woods, beautiful drop step, nothing there, and Richardson plucks it out of the air. Boy, that was like the war game that Michigan State loves oh, to play. Oh, stolen back by Arenas. Jefferson between two defenders. Puts it down. He doesn't hang on the rim that time. And again, Richardson, who is an incredible leaper, realizes he just can't hang up there with Jefferson when he's got the lead. That may have been the killer moment for the Spartans who had possession down 10 with seven-plus minutes to play. It's a four-point turnaround with that steal. And another, another one. one. Just Cross amazing how many times Gardner into the line, and that may do it. That's the ball game, Jim. I'll tell you why. The cross-court passing. Look at Tom Izzo. He said, what team is playing in this game? I don't recognize them. We're talking about a situation here where Michigan State has been tremendous this year not turning the ball over they're not only not uh, only turning it over today jim they're turning it over leading to open uncontested repeatedly fast break baskets they get up in the air they're throwing balls cross court bad angle passes and arizona with great anticipation really taking advantage of it and it's back to a 15 point lead for the Wildcats. There has to be at least six breakaways today on bad cross-court pass. They look identical. Yeah. Richardson doesn't make the shot because he knows Jefferson is coming. Normally, he just elevates and looks over the traffic. Arenas. Great decision by Arenas. Inside, wide open right. Beautiful job by Arenas. Tom Izzo has seen enough. This Arizona team really clicking now. A stretch. That looks like we'll put the champions away. Not to take that shot, makes the play. He cuts across, and look at where Wright is. Wide open. Really great basketball there. Unselfish play. Arenas realizing we can get a better shot with this kind of lead. You don't need to go ahead and take that shot with nobody under. Arizona just playing a great second half. You saw the seven-point stretch with 
Just a minute elapsed in that stretch. It's a starting five for Arizona that can all beat you offensively and also great skills giving it up. Passing it around Jefferson with that assist. Well, since the last time that I saw Arizona, the biggest change to me is Jefferson. He Over. has become just a perfect super. Oh, Woods is down. I think he's hurt. He's uh, to his feet. That was an over-the-back foul on Jason Richardson. Let's check the CBS Sports line stat of the game in the backcourt, starting backcourt, that is. Richardson and Bell was six. Arizona's tandem. Arenas, Gardner, 28. It's a one-and-one one for Jefferson. Woods uh, hurt his wrist a little bit, Jim, when he came down. Edgerson is going to go into the ballgame and looks for him a little bit. Maybe he's even got a scratch on there. Looks like they're putting a Band-Aid on it. There may be a little blood on the arm. So Edgerson comes in. In the meantime, well, you hear so many people complimenting this man at the line right now. And it's so impressive. One and one here. Is he so complete, an 11-point scorer who doesn't even have to score to beat you? His mother and father, the missionaries we spoke of who have traveled around the world and uh, joining their son here at the Final Four. Well, as you said, Frankie Williams was held to three for 15. He is so versatile, Jim, as a defensive player. I mean, you can see him guarding a, a, a big forward. You see him guarding a small forward, going out and playing a guard at either position. Another turnover. They, it's, it's like somebody has already faxed them the play and said, this is where we're going to throw it, and they're in that position before the spark. Well, what really amazes me is these have all been cross-court telegraph passes by a veteran basketball team. You just don't throw that pass. Woods wasn't out for long, and all smiles for Edgerson, his usual all-out effort off the bench. 11 steals in the game, only two on the Michigan State side, 11 for the Cats. And I'm not going to take anything away from Arizona, Jim, calling them steals, but they really were passes that probably never should have been thrown in the first place on about half of those. But you did say Arizona came out right away in this half with the quick feet. They sure did. And that's what started them all. Hudson. Nice play by Hudson on the inside. Really froze right that time. But two big a deficit now to try to come back just on the offensive end. Michigan State has got to create turnovers if they're going to get back in this game. Woods outside again. He can shoot. But oh, Arena's uh, flat-footed, uh, able to follow it up. You know why? Great blocking out technique. So now Michigan State seeing some of their own drills work against them. Bell, just a disaster outside for the starting backcourt and right. Right and Jefferson in there. All this has been a great rebounding exhibition by Arizona. All five Arizona starters in double figures. They average double figures on the season. They've done it again today against last year's champions. Jefferson. Right battling Hudson on the inside. Sunday on CBS, 60 Minutes, then Touched by an Angel, and the CBS Sunday movie, Never Let Her Go, starring Mark Harmon and Rachel Ward. And Agano out. Arenas is also out right to the bench. And Jim, Arenas is going out, I think, to see that trainer again. I think that he feels that pinch in the back again. And I think Lute Olsen very concerned going down here. I doubt if we'll see him back in this game. Richardson saying, get me away from number 44 so I can get a shot off. There, there it is. He's open as he's had all day, and he hits it. Remember the beginning of the game, Jim? I said that he should not be on the side of the zone where Jefferson is. That time, he faded out to the top and got a better look on his jump shot. But it's taken him till 4 minutes and 25 seconds to find out where he needed to be. It's only the second three of the game for the Spartans in 13 attempts. Going to be bringing in Brandon Smith. The next whistle, Michigan State. Gardner stepped back, three back of the rim. Walton fights for it. Spartans have an advantage, and Richardson unable to handle. I have not seen this team throw the ball away like this ever. Tom Izzo buries his hands in disbelief. This basketball.
basketball game, points off of turnovers. 25 for Arizona, 10 for Michigan State. There's your 15-point lead right there. It's amazing. Michigan State has been a great team. Assist-turnover ratio, 132 better assists than turnovers coming in this game. So we're looking at a Michigan State that Tom Izzo has not seen all year. And outside. Smith called for that in Arizona late in the year. Ten straight wins coming into the Final Four, including a win at Stanford when the Cardinal was ranked number one. And we're looking at a free throw shooting team that is yep. really a good one. Proved their medal last week in the last three minutes against Illinois, knocking down about 80% in the last three minutes. Well, 43 of 56 for the game. So this is a team, even their bigger people like Lauren Woods, who's been outstanding in the tournament from the free throw line. Nobody weak from the line on the club. Run into the one and one by Gardner. Lou Olson has to love the way this team has played, and I'm going to say it all started with Jefferson. I really think that he is the key ingredient in this club now with his versatility on defense. I'll tell you, Woods also came out and started this game, yep. and you knew it was going to be a big effort, a spirited effort by Woods from the start and, and then all the, the way. And the second half, the way Wright started positioning himself inside. You can almost make a, a case about every starter on that team today. That's Hudson. Why, that's why they're going to be in the championship game. Hudson with 18, 16 of them coming in this half. Been a great competitor. Arenas with three minutes to go and Lute Olson about to extend his stay here in Minneapolis where he used to live, where he went to college at Augsburg. Came down from North Dakota to go to college here. Didn't want to go to a big school like the University of North Dakota, he told us there in Grand Fork. There's a foul on that oh, shot. No Arena ball. steals it again. That one was telegraphed. And realizes that the clock is his teammate. So instead of taking a bad shot, pulls it back out. Smart play. Chappelle picked off on the screen by Edgerson. But again, they'll kick it out and use the full 35. Want to get fouled here. Arenas. Yep, they, they want to get fouled. Very smart playing by this Arizona club. The steals and the easy baskets. It's just been one replay after another. It really is, Jim. And there's that court, cross court passing in the back court. Doesn't make any sense at all because the passes are telegraphed and lead to a break where you don't even have anybody back defensively to cover. Double bonus, two shots for Arenas. Ooh, and that was so far short, you had to wonder if that wasn't influenced by the injury. Yeah, Barely got to the front of the rim. Well, I'm surprised he came back in this game because he was wincing when he went out. See how he's starting to roll yep. the neck and yep. trying to get his arms straightened out again? I think he yep. really ought to come out of this ball game. And shrugging a grimace. Yeah. He just doesn't seem comfortable out there. Gets it to go. We're talking about a team 75% from the line as a club. 80% in the NCAA yeah. tournament. Oh, nice fake by Hudson. Beautiful Number fake. One last memorable performance for Andre Hudson. Throws the seven-footer on that one. But not enough time for Michigan State to make a comeback here the way they were able to do in the NCAA tournament last year. Hudson's tied his season high with this 20-point effort. But just a minute, 45 to go. And Arizona will be riding an 11-game win streak into the championship game Monday night. Jefferson. It'll be Jefferson. Good job on the boards. Kept alive and finally Randolph snags it. Jim, that'll be 20 out of 22 wins for this club. Yep, started eight and five on the season. Edgerson with a strong rebound. The kindergarten teacher comes back. Yes, took the year off, did Edgerson a year ago, redshirt year, to get his teacher certificate. He taught kindergarten, wants to be kindergarten teach school teacher when it's all over he's got to have a soft side to him could you imagine being in kindergarten and he walks into class the first day still meets with the kids from his <laughs> class a year ago been a great man for the community in tucson by way of new orleans 
Jefferson, I tell you what, he doesn't. He's a very unselfish player. When he shoots, he has some stroke. He really does. He is really stepping forward now and has been the player of this game, setting the stage for his team. 17 for Jefferson, 16 in the second half. Timeout, Michigan Mountain, Michigan. College teammates, best men in each other's wedding. And there's Lupe. Now we can see her. Third straight, final four. They uh, had only lost four times, this team, all season long. Lost to Indiana, last second shot. Ohio State, Illinois, Penn State. Incredible follow-up. Tom Izzo saying that he really thought before the year, Sweet 16 would be uh, quite a run. He had uh, this paranoia he talked about. He had heard from so many coaches who had won a championship. They all told him, you're going to change. Your team's going to change. You're going to get fat and sassy, and so will you. Your team will, but they didn't. They fought hard all year. Came back one of the Big Ten championship, and they're taking out the starters now on the Arizona side. And three-point shot. Target there for Taylor. Well, Lou Dawson gets to that championship game a little bit differently. You know what he's going to do with here? Miles Simon. He's going to beat a number one seed here for the fifth straight time when he's played a number one in the tournament. You remember what oh, he did yeah, at 97? Kansas, North Carolina, and Kentucky. Not bad, huh? Three winning his programs in college basketball history. And then he beat the one in Illinois. And now the one here, Michigan State. That's five times in a row. Jefferson with one. Oh, Bobby Donaldson gives us a lot more memory here. And Edgerson laughing. Now that's as good a live pass as you can throw. Richard Jefferson said this is over. And that's as good of a half as you'll ever see in a Final Four. A team riding incredibly high on emotion and playing with purpose is now playing Monday night in the championship game. Some great sportsmanship being shown out of there and respect that those coaches and players have for each other. Class act. Second half, outscoring the champs of a year ago, 48 